watching Rogers TV Waterloo Region. This past summer, the Stratford Perth Museum was home to an exhibit that broke records in droves and brought people into the museum to take in Anne Frank, the house exhibit. And it's back. The good news is it's back once again. And back is John Kastner, the general manager of the Stratford Perth Museum, to talk about this. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. I have to admit, I'm one of the people that went to the Stratford Festival to see Anne Frank the production that they put on, but I didn't get over to the museum to taking the exhibit, and I was so disappointed and so excited to find out that I've got a second chance to take it in. Well, that was really one of the compelling reasons that uh, we brought it back when we had the opportunity, is that uh, after it left, which is it left in the middle of October, the same time that the play finished at the festival, The Diary of Anne Frank, uh, that was when the exhibit was scheduled to leave. And uh, every day for the next week or two weeks, uh, someone would call or drop in and say, you know, I'm here to see the Anne Frank exhibit or has it left and and uh, we were saying, well, sorry, it's gone and it'll, it'll likely never be back. It was so serendipitous that we got the exhibit from the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam to begin with. And then through a series of fortuitous events, it became available again for a short period and uh, that was really one of the compelling reasons that we uh, we agreed to take it back and so we got it back for another six weeks. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised to find it was coming back because I know from talking to you the work and the dedication it took on your part and the staff at the Stratford Perth Museum to even get that exhibit into Canada in the first place. Yeah, it was really a, uh, it was very for fortunate for us and obviously the relationship with the Stratford Festival was really integral to that and the fact that they were mounting the play, The Diary of Anne Frank, and that was uh, very meaningful for the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam as well, that uh, they thought that that combination of those two things would mean a lot of footprints through the museum and uh, a real experience for people who not only see the play, but then see the exhibit as well. So having heard some of the people and the reactions from people who got to see the exhibit the first time around, what was the reaction? Was it what you expected it to be? No, no, not at all. Uh, you know, at the very start, uh, you know, people would come in and we'd say, well, you know, thanks very much. Uh, the exhibit's here and, you know, you'll start here and you go there and, you know, enjoy the exhibit. And I remember we opened at uh, 9 o'clock on a Saturday. About 10.30, one of our volunteers came up and said, you know, we need to do a couple things right away. We need to get some Kleenex in the building and we need to find a system where people who have paid can go outside for a little bit and come back in. And where people are saying, you know, I, I'm not done going through the exhibit, but I have, I have to go take a bit of a break. You know, can I get back in? So we had to, you know, come up with a bit of a system for that because lots of times we had lineups for people to get in. So, but that is really what happened. And it, it was a lot more powerful uh, than we thought it would be. And it impacted different people different ways. And, um, you know, one of the things I said is you measure the success of an exhibit in in a variety of ways, you know, you know, number of people through the building, um, that's, you know, visitors, of course, but also the impactfulness of this exhibit, I think, was really one of the real successes. And, you know, I heard you earlier talking about, you know, Syrian refugees and people being, being displaced and people fleeing from one country to another in a place like Canada accepting them. And the exhibit is called Anne Frank, A History for Today. And it really is very much a history for today. A lot of the things that you see in Anne Frank's life, a lot of you see things that happen are things that happen every day that are that are currently happening. You know, in the United States, we're talking about, you know, a list of Muslims and people having to wear badges to say that they're Muslims in the United States and the person running for president talking about those sorts of things. Those are the exact same things that happened to Jewish people first in Germany and than afterwards in Holland. Well, it's certainly going to spark a lot of discussion. And part of the reason you wanted to bring it back as well, because earlier in the year we had the suspension of extracurricular activities right. for students and classes. They weren't able to make it in. Now they have an opportunity that, that children will be able to come in and take this in and learn as well. And that's really the other compelling reason. We had a lot of uh, cancellations of school groups uh, because of um, the, the labor issue with the uh, school boards. And that was another real thing is that January was uh, the kids are back to school and it's a, time, a good time for school trips. And so that was another one of the real reasons to give those 
that demographic a chance to see the exhibit? Well, they've got a chance, but it's just for this month till January the 31st at the Stratford Perth Museum. It is Anne Frank, a history for today, 10 till 4 daily, 12 to 4 on Sundays at the Stratford Perth Museum. And along with that, we also want to mention something special that you're doing next week, and it's dance time. Yeah, it's dance time. It's time for a dance, but this isn't just any dance. You're calling it the Perth's Come Marching Home Again. Yes. Perth Regiment was, a, uh, was based in Stratford. It, they were very active in, uh, in the Second World War, and they were very active in liberating much of Holland. So it all sort of ties in together. And 70 years to the day, less one day, uh, we've got a dance, which is a recreation of the homecoming dance when the Perth Regiment came home in 1946. They came home, uh, there was a dance January 16, 1946, so January 15, uh, which is a Friday, we've got a dance in the exact same place, we've got big band music, we've got the same decorations, we even used the same ticket. Really? Yeah, we found the same ticket and just stroked out the one date and put the other date on it. <laughs> and uh, it's at the Stratford Armories, which is an, an incredible building. And uh, when you walk into that parade hall, which is up on the third floor, gleaming hardwood floors, I don't think that room looks a whole lot different than it did January 16, 1946. And because you're using the same venue, it is a smaller venue, so you, yes. there's only so many tickets that are Just available for this. Just 140 tickets, and uh, you know, by the time the show airs, we might be sold out. Well, if you can, get a ticket to that. Absolutely. And make sure you stop by the Stratford Perth Museum for the Anne Frank History for Today yeah. exhibit and all the great exhibits and work that you do there. Thanks all very right. much. Thanks for joining us, John. Thanks. Okay, we're back in just a moment. Stay with us.